this whole episode is basically just like just fuck Barbie, man. She's such a bitch. That's all I can say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, she's not have... cute at all. <laughs> <laughs> we had our main guy, uh, Sean. You know, step up for Emilia Cohen and Ram, and you know they're kind of uh, budding friendship in this episode, which I thought was really, really well done. Um, mm-hmm. Since you know, in the beginning, we saw. Both of them obviously bearing being very reserved. One Ram being the individual that she is, you know, really, really tough on herself and feel like she can't do anything right. And then you have Sean, who is very kind uh, of like does things by the books. Oh, Rum. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, but again, you know, I really enjoyed kind of the further background of the history of the Shadow House that we get from this episode, especially when rum goes missing and they're navigating through that one corridor that they learn has like all these traps mixed in it and they had you know like the very visualized uh camera panning of the arrows like flying across (laughs) so Mm -hmm. um, well and then in that scene too sorry to interrupt you but you're good uh, to that point, um, when Sean had like it, at, at, at after those arrows fired, he sat there and like forcibly chanted to himself something along the lines of like, you know, don't bother yourself with like trivial matters. Yeah. I don't know what the exact quote was, but that's the yeah. sentiment. Basically, and yeah. he just kept on like chanting that to himself. So it's like they obviously know that like something's messed up, and they just keep telling themselves that because what else can they do? Um, so I like that little addition as as well. Like he seems like he knows a little bit more about some of the darker secrets of the house even though he's a newer doll too yeah and then apart from you know i I share the same sentiment with barbie just being an absolute bitch for lack of the better words but what about ricky the blonde haired well he's just a kiss ass too so yeah i feel like he's a similar character i feel like i'm not gonna like his character because it's like one he's, he's he's either a product of his corresponding shadow figure patrick that we just all we got is his name in this episode yeah so um i'll be interested to see kind of more about him but i can definitely see him being the one that is going to be kind of this very like brown noser goody two shoes and then maybe you know he has this character change throughout the series but yeah Yeah. he's definitely got introduced as a dick (laughs) yeah hard to say definitely got some draco malfoy vibes off that guy (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm exactly. More, I'm curious, like, what's gonna happen with the debut? Because I don't know who, which of these masters haven't debuted yet. Because I'm assuming Rum's master hasn't debuted yet, and I don't know if if uh, Ricky's master Patrick if he debuted yet. Either. It sounds like I don't know who's all new or not, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't know how that's gonna tie in with like. I would it's... assume that they haven't yet. Just going no, off no. of like the main characters that we see mm-hmm. in the opening, I'm sure like those five kids that mm-hmm. we see, they're gonna be the ones that quote-unquote debut with their mm-hmm. corresponding um shadow lord so yep that's what i was thinking too like i wonder like, is it only just one person that gets picked or i guess he's if you pass you get to all go oh, yeah, yeah I'm curious how that, that's a, that a very valid question like what are the what are the ramifications too like if you don't pass what does that mean not only for the doll what does mm-hmm. that mean for the corresponding shadow lord mm-hmm. you know do they get changed back into a human do they get you know I don't think executed, so. Executed or because I one of the earlier episodes. Are they just we, like a we, super lower rank? One of the earlier episodes we saw uh Kay and Milico so, uh, wa- they watched like yeah a master and the sh- and the doll like walk outside. So I don't think they get turned to human or whatever. Or maybe I could be wrong. We'll see. Well, that was Barbie that they saw, right? Because that's what Barbie said when she saw Milico. She's like, "Oh, you're that girl that waved oh, was to it Barbie? me from the window." Okay, I didn't realize yeah. it was her. Never mind. Yeah. So, um. And... But then I don't know. I don't know no, if uh, if if like was it like uh, was who's who's the other doll? Like was it Sarah or or Mia? I forgot the names, but like the kind of like brunette looking doll mm-hmm. that that she started with. They were they were outside with her master. I didn't know if they debuted or not either. So yeah, definitely. You know, obviously, still very much to learn, and I think a lot of that, to your point, David, will surround this debut as we get to learn what exactly goes into it and the, you know, results that will come from it. Um, But again, I think this is the show, you know, when Taylor, you were saying earlier for uh, the Moriarty, this is, you know, the perfect show that's really making you kind of think and wonder and and kind of theorize like, okay, you know, what is going on here? What is at play? Like all those kind of thought provoking questions that makes a show really great. And so that's why I, this is kind of still, in, I would say, in my one of my top three 
for this anime season. Yeah, this is how sure. good of a job it does of that like suspense, but then also like mm-hmm. thought provocation. Mm-hmm. I just hope that later on, like when because that that end part when uh, Kate was getting mad that she, that Emilka wasn't spending time with her, I hope that doesn't turn anything big because like yeah. it's just gonna be annoying when it becomes like the whole misunderstanding, like oh, like mm-hmm. or just like even just like her like being lonely or whatever, just like not like I guess this is just with me. Like I really don't like it when when characters lack empathy so like i really don't like it when they don't see other characters point of view like how she's always busy and if she's just gotta go on that 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 tantrum again and just have all the soot so i hope yeah. it doesn't end up like that no it's a very good point that you bring up because i think the last few episodes as Amilico has been interacting with the other dolls every time they do show kate they're specifically showing like the mm-hmm. soot just continuing mm-hmm. to you know yeah i, I, I actually head kind of like that they're doing it that way in this anime though because i feel like it's going to serve a purpose like i don't feel like it's in there just for needless drama um i feel like there's a reason i feel like it's supposed to express how uncertain these shadows are before they debut like kate to me seems almost just as clueless as amilico about a lot of things and I think that things like that just really underline that that fact. You know what I mean? Her being lonely that Emilico is not coming back. And the fact that it really seems like Emilico is the only person that she trusts and that she would consider possibly like a friend of sorts, at least mm-hmm. a confidant. Um, so I feel like it's there for a purpose. But I totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, that's, too, that's it drives just me crazy me in other me shows. Personally, like I just mm-hmm. just a little, it's like a pet peeve of mine, like in characters, like mm-hmm. lacking empathy so mm-hmm. yeah yeah um other than that that's everything i, mean, I had um I, I was just like it's also with barbie too just like her like i don't know it was just like that's her personality or that's just her power tripping because if she has like some sort of important role in the story and it's just like, like again, yeah, both. right both and it's just again too how like when they find it in the end that like it was just like the the hinge like being rusty and breaking off so technically it was no one's fault but of course like they're mm-hmm. just they round everyone up trying to do the blame game. And then they have the two the two mates too, like trying to again like put the blame on Rum because she's like quote unquote the most useless. Like I can't. Oh no, I'm I'm glad you did bring up the maid because I forgot the one um and I can't remember what the term was for them, the but the maids doll. Yeah, the veiled dolls. That was a not a huge thing, but another thing that just adds to the layer of mystery of just like, damn, that's really creepy. You know, you have these veiled dolls just cruising through the house in the middle of the night, like Resident Evil style type stuff. <laughs> yeah, I have a theory. I have a theory about oh, okay. them, and Go I ahead. think that they're the other. I think they're the failed dolls, and I think that like uh... Uh, because they failed, their punishment is that their faces are destroyed since they couldn't be accurate faces Ooh, for the shadows. That would and that's be really cool. Be and, then, and then you can see. Oh, that would be a cool <laughs> reveal of sorts. Yeah. I like that a lot. So we'll see. Yeah, it's definitely dark. I mean, you know, kind of my last point from my end was for Rum when Rum goes missing, and like you know, she's talking to her finger as kind of like her imaginary oh, like safety blanket of sorts. And I'm just like, damn, shit's, shit's fucked I didn't up. Think, like, I, feel... I didn't think much about that, but like when you say it like that, it's just... Because like in other shows, I... it sounds so innocent, but then here it's like, it's always, there's always a dark undertone, so you can't like, right? trust so now anything. Like, to the point of, you know, one, we see that all of the dolls really don't help Rum out, and she's constantly being like ragged on by Barbie. So now you have to think further. When we get to see her Shadow Lord... Is that like another thing? Like, is the Shadow Lord also like mentally abusing her in ways that we haven't seen yet? And oh man, I, I can't help but feel for Rum. I feel like she's hopefully she she gets her well, doesn't seem like her, you her... Know, positive outlook, but I can also see her being just a very tragic character that's yeah, really going to be put through. Her doesn't ringer. seem like even like her master mm-hmm. care about her. Like they don't they didn't show her them talking or just is she Rum's just there just do her job and just leave. So yeah. Well, uh, you got to assume that there's got to be a fail. Oh, uh, sorry, a doll that's going to fail at the de- debut. Otherwise, they wouldn't be talking about failed dolls so much. Um, it's not going to be. It's definitely not going to be a Milico, and it's not going to be. Um, I'm sorry, the blonde one. Oh, Ricky. Ricky. Ricky, and it's not going to be Ricky. It could be Sean, but I doubt it. So, like by process of elimination, I what think you're right. I think Rum is going to be the tragic character. What happens with failed dolls? We don't. We know. don't know. Tune in okay. next time, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why they're gonna have to show it, right? One of them's got to fail. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I will be here. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, though, again, doing all the things right, giving a lot of good suspense and mystery. And to David's point, you know, hopefully they just don't um, 
it's just mess up is the right yeah. word but just you know obviously we're, we're holding a high standard for what we've seen so yeah far, so. just a lot mm-hmm. it's a lot of good things happening in the background that just makes us think so really good mm-hmm. although that mm-hmm. the, yeah. the was it the, the soot monster eating um like other girl's face still traumatizes me like that's i've i've never seen anything so creepy in, 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 in a long time yeah. so maybe other people show... maybe other people will enjoy that but i i do not want to see that again please no <laughs> wasn't the show uh shown as a as a slice of life it is first i, I thought it was first episode but i got bamboozled so it's a very it's a very sick Man. slice of life my enemy list know, so... everybody my enemy list isn't always 100 percent accurate with their tags that's true too oh no, oh, no. stratton's favorite website failed him yeah, I don't even know what I would have done. Basically, if I'm one of those people, oh, I got a slice of life, I'm going to watch this, and then all of a sudden just become just... He's right, an angry uh, review. I think, oh, I, think it's right. a, I think it's a fair tag, because there is those more, like, it's upbeat like, of, like, yeah. Kate and the Milico having their positive interactions, Milico having positive interactions with the different doll characters, and, you know, the moment that they like, have with Sean be- when they started to bond like the, and everything, like... The creepy things happening in the background is is slice of life, just, yeah, trust... Yeah, it, it's lighthearted, but it's just like, oh, oh shit, like, you know, w- something goes wrong and just, you're fucking dead. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, not to be just, blunt, but that's what it is. One step uh, higher than real life. <laughs> yeah. Just ignore, ignore the creepy, the creepy shadows flying around. Exactly. You're good. Easy. Uh, yep. Looking forward to, to more mm. quality content from yep, this series. Yeah, for sure. So that's going to be it for Shadow House.